All right, we're going to look at the surface features of a kidney. Now in this case, we're looking at a pig kidney. We're using the pig kidney for comparative anatomy. It has all the same structures as your human kidneys. However, you'll note that the pig kidney is quite long. Just to give you a sense of size, the human kidney would be about the size of your fist. So you'll note that because the pig has a, a larger body mass and more blood, it's gonna require larger kidneys for filtering that blood to produce urine. All right, if we look at the surface of the kidney, this shiny surface layer is called the renal capsule. And renal, uh, the root word ren is one you'll definitely need to know, that means kidney. So renal capsule. You'll note that there's a depression on the side of the kidney. This would be on the medial side of the kidney. And that's what gives it its classic kidney bean shape. That depression is called the renal hilum. And at that depression, um, several structures would come into the kidney. Uh, they're covered in connective tissue right here, so we can't see the, the specific structures just yet. But embedded within this connective tissue, we would find the renal vein, the renal artery, and also the ureter, which is a duct that transports urine from the kidney down to the urinary bladder. Okay, so we've looked at the surface of the kidney. Now we're going to look at the internal structures. So what we've done here is we've cut the kidney in half along the frontal plane. So I'm gonna remove the anterior side of the kidney so that we can see the internal structures. So to get you oriented, remember that that surface layer, that very thin surface layer is called the renal capsule and it's very thin. We can really hardly even see the edge of it here. And this area here, remember that depression is called the hilum. And now we can see some of those structures that um, are within uh, the hilum. So this blue color indicates venous blood. Uh, so this would be the renal vein. And then if we go looking behind or posterior to the renal vein, we can find some red areas that would um, indicate the renal artery. And note that the diameter of the renal artery is much smaller than the large renal vein. Another structure that would be deep within this connective tissue is the tube or duct called the ureter. Here I've cut the tissue in cross sections so that we can see a cross section view of the ureter. And you'll notice that it's been color coded yellow. And I can dig out, hopefully, a bit of that connective tissue so that we can see that it is in fact a cavity. All right, so we've got a cross section view of the ureter there. Moving on from the hilum, let's look at the various layers of tissue within the kidney. Remember at the surface is the capsule. Just deep to the capsule is an area called the renal cortex. Cortex meaning layer closer to the surface. So the renal cortex. And this is where actual filtration of uh, blood takes place in order to produce urine. In that layer, the renal cortex, you would find many, many, many thousands of microscopic structures called nephrons that function to filter blood to produce urine. Deep to the cortex is this layer within the kidney called the renal medulla. So this whole area is referred to as the renal medulla or medulla. And medulla implies that it's closer to the center of the organ. If we look closely at the renal medulla, we'll note that it's organized into separate sections that have kind of a roughly triangular shape. We can see one of those triangles here and here. And because of their triangular shape, they're referred to as renal pyramids. So here's a renal pyramid, and here's a renal pyramid. The area between the pyramids are referred to as renal columns. The renal columns allow blood vessels branching off the renal artery and blood vessels that merge to form the renal vein travel through those renal columns. So in the renal columns, you would find lots of blood vessels. And again, each renal column is the space between renal pyramids. At the base of a renal pyramid are cavities. We can see one cavity right here. And I'm actually gonna point out these cavities on this half of the kidney. So let's take a closer look at that. All of this yellow would uh, imply where urine um, travels. So I'm gonna dig out that yellow tissue. 
And now we can get a nicer view of not only the renal pyramids and the renal columns, but the cavities that the renal pyramids will dump their urine into. So if we look at the base of a renal pyramid, small cavities are called minor calyces, and they dump into larger cavities called a major calyx. So again, a small cavity is a minor calyx, and a larger cavity is a major calyx. Plural of calyx is calyces. You'll note that all the major calyces dump into a large central cavity called the renal pelvis which ultimately will lead to the ureter.